How do you set appointments without ever picking up the phone? I'm gonna give you a couple ideas, a couple ways, exact scripts, what to do, when to do it, why to do it, how fast to do it, how to do it, etc. Before I do, I want you to know that I'm gonna put a, just a little disclaimer out. I believe you should set appointments by picking up the phone. However, I get agents that reach out to me all the time and they tell me, I'm struggling to pick up the phone. I'm scared of this thing. The most valuable asset <clears throat> sales tool on planet earth is the, is the phone. But most agents are scared of it. There's a fear behind picking up the phone. You're not good. It's a lack of confidence. You're, you're struggling with it. It's worrying you. And I get agents to reach out to me almost every single day. I had one over the weekend was like, Hey, I, I just don't feel, I, I, I'm, I, I don't like picking up the phone. You know, I'm kind of scared of it. What do you recommend? Well, I recommend you pick it up. However, if you don't want to, and you want to set appointments without picking up the phone, even though I think you should do both, here's a couple ideas, okay? First thing is I've set a lot of appointments via text. A lot of agents that buy our leads, they also set, they also set appointments via text. Agents that we work with company-wise, they set appointments via text. And what my recommendations are to give you a few tips on texting leads. Number one, you should text your leads every single day. Now you can set up automations to do it or you can just physically text them. It's easy, it's simple. You can paste the thing and put their name in it like it's easy, okay? But you should text every single day for the first several days. That's a part of our 12 touch process is three text in the first 72 hours. So text immediately, okay? Second thing after texting immediately would be, what should you say? I believe you should finish with a question. When you text someone, you should have a script you should use their name, you should use favorite colors, whatever you have, information you have, and you should always finish with a question. Most people simply say, hey, you like the script, that they have the wrong text, like the wrong call we talk about all the time, the wrong text. When they text, hey, uh, I'm, you responded saying you wanted information about burial life insurance, and that's it, right? There's no, there's no call to action, there's no question. It's statistically proven that if you finish with a question, especially on a text, you have a higher chance of getting a text back. So stop texting people without asking a question. Now, if you want to do something like this, Betty, this is Cody. I'm getting back to you about your requests for the new final expense programs. You put your favorite color as red. Thank you for doing that. I'm the local flood underwriter and I'll be out in your area on Friday, should I drop it off in the morning or afternoon? There's two different ways to do this. That's option number one, okay? Option number one is where you get a little longer text. You can break it up with some spaces, but you get, you let them know who they are, that you know who they are, that who you are, that you're getting back to them about something, that you have the data that they gave you, like the color to remind them it's like a security password. You can also, uh, and then you also let them know I'll be in your area and, I'll, and finish with the question. That's the details of number one. Or number two could be shorter. Okay, Betty, it's, this is Cody. I'm getting back to you about your request for the new final expense information. You put your favorite color was red. I'm assuming that you remember doing that recently, correct? That's a softball. If you wanted to use a shorter version, that's option number two. That's a softball to get them to text you back. Because the whole goal of a text, it isn't even always to set an appointment on the first text. The goal is to get a text back. Even if they say, hey, I'm not interested. Even if they say, never come to my home. Even if they say, I did not do that. Even if they make up other lies that you should never believe. Even if they do those things, I'm here to tell you that you should want a text back. Because even if someone says no, they're saving you time, right? A lead that tells me no just means that they just don't want to be sold or they're not quite ready or they need a little TLC to, to actually get in front of them, right? It doesn't mean that if when they say they didn't do that, they did it, right? Lead vendors, they have timestamps, security passwords, lead IDs, you know, all these other things, okay? But when you're texting a lead, those are a couple different ways and you have to always finish with a question. So that's a few ways, really quick, on how you can set appointments without ever picking up the phone. Now there's other ways, like email, for example. Email is another way. It's not, I don't, 
I don't prefer it over text. I prefer text over email, which is why I'm saving email for later. But you can also send the same thing via email that you would send via text. And some will email you back. Now, I'm going to give you an example. If I bought 100 leads, okay, and I texted them all immediately, you know, I, all, I sent them all a text within five minutes of three minutes of them of me getting the lead, okay, and, and I didn't call them. I would send 100 text messages, you know, within a few minutes. I would e individually, I wouldn't bulk mass it, I would individual text. I would probably get uh, about 95-6% would probably see the text, okay? About 92% would open it. Um, about two-thirds would actually read it probably. Sometimes I get texts and you can just tell I really don't need to read this. But I have to open it because I don't want a notification on my text message box, okay? Ring a bell. We're the same way. You guys are too. Um, but I'll probably get 100 messages out. I'll probably have, of people that text me back, I'll probably get at least 20 texts back and I'll probably set about 10 appointments. Now, even if you're buying 30 leads and you can get three appointments through text, then you should do it because it's gonna increase your appointments at ratio. That's why just calling isn't the answer because if you just call, and we need, we need to do something where I just literally text a bunch of leads on video one day and we see how it goes. but. Even if you, if you just called, there's a certain percentage that wants the phone. If you just text, there's a certain percentage that would rather talk to someone. If you just email, there's a certain percentage that would rather you text them than email them, right? So that's why we prefer to use all three. Or there's some, won't text you back, won't respond to your email, won't answer the phone, but they're at home all day and they'll answer the door because they're watching Prices Right, okay, or Jeopardy or whatever. So that's why you have to use other ways. And if you don't want to pick up the phone and call them, big mistake, you should. However, make sure you're using text, email, door knocking. I know agents. I mean, if I, if I bought a batch of, let's just say 25 leads and went out and door knocked them right now, I bet about 10 of them, I would say eight to 12 will be home. And let's just say that 10 are home. Let's say that, let's just say that 10 are home. That's a little under half. So that's fair. 40%. Let's say 10 are home, 25 leads, 10 are home. I'll probably get into at least five, six, you know, and if that's the case, then I didn't make any calls. I didn't make any texts. I didn't make any emails, but I just got in front of and sat down with five people. And if you can sit down with five people out of 25 leads, if you can't make three or four sales and get a massive ROI on those amount of leads you just bought, then something is wrong. You're either lazy, your pitch is off, or you're just not good with people, okay? Or, or you're not as good at answering objections. So even though I recommend picking up the phone, if you don't want to, there are other alternative methods like texting, which is why you should text every day. You should know what to text because I get agents all the time that are scared of the phone and texting is a good, good, good alternative to getting in front of people. And surprisingly, you'll get more people text you back than you would think. That will surprise you. I think that surprises most agents. They're like, ah, text will never work. Try it. Okay, Dylan, any, uh, any questions or thoughts on Facebook or YouTube? Um, Mariela Rodriguez Horde says, first time here. First, welcome, welcome, welcome. And Thank you for being here. Amanda Black also said, new producer and absolutely love all these videos. Nice. Thank you, Amanda. We're here to help. We love doing this. Lindsay, what's up? What's up? What's up? She won the Monster Retreat package and, and got to go to the Monster Retreat and say Monster Premiere at the conference. Uh, I, I love knowing, when you guys are watching this, I love knowing, you know, who you are, where you're from, uh, you know, et, et cetera, because at the end of the day, we do this for you, you know, uh, if, if we don't do this for us. And... A lot of agents are scared of the phone. I get that. And, and, or, or we're not good on the phone, but we can be better. We need to be better. We need to pick it up. I think a lot of times I told the guy that texted me this recently and he said, Hey, I, I'm scared to pick up the phone. What I said was, is typically it's because my energy is off. If I've been, if I worked out where I will go do some push-ups or go run around the block or do some jumping jacks and get my energy flowing, I'm actually more likely to pick up the phone. 
So typically, not wanting to pick up the phone is more of an energy problem than it is a motivation problem. I, I believe that. Now, there's a lot of people that would disagree with that, but hey, you do your own show and tell me later, okay? But in this show, I believe that people's energy is low. And when your energy is low, you have a lack of confidence. When you have a lack of confidence, you're scared of something. When you're scared of something, you don't do something. And when you don't do something, guess what? You don't do anything, okay? So I think a lot of it starts with energy and confidence and knowing what to say, knowing what, that's what, we, that's what we do so many live dials, live cold calling, live dial dialing leads, all those things. It's because agents need to know what to say to leads. Most agents, if they had a proven system they could follow, like our script, which is really, really easy, then they would do it, but most of them don't know what to do. Or when you do call leads and you're struggling with your confidence of knowing what to say when you're talking to someone and they can feel that through the phone, maybe you're pausing early in the call or maybe you're not pausing, but maybe you're showing a lack of confidence. Maybe you're not taking control. When you don't take control, they take control. And, and that's a major issue in, in our, uh, in, in, that's a major issue in our uh, industry is if you're not in control, if you're not confident, if your energy is not right, I don't care if we found sales, people that bought insurance and we handed those to you and you had to call them, you would still struggle with working leads. Okay? It's a true story because your energy's off. When my energy's off, my confidence is off, my confidence is off, I'm not in control. And to be good on the phone, I must, 100% of the time, I must be in control. Hey, you love this video and you want some brain food? I got five books that every new insurance agent should read. Go watch that. Grab the books. See you over there. When you read a book, when you go to an event, when you listen to a book, when you go to a mastermind, when you buy a university,